College football week two against the spread picks. Of course, brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. Check out the promo code in the description. It's NCAAF2021. You can sign up there and get a 125% deposit bonus. Go and check it out. Do yourself a favor. First game up. We've got a few of them this week. Illinois at Virginia. Virginia, a 10-point favorite. Chris, you like Brett. I'm going to let you start us off. So, I like Brett. I, I like Bronco as well. I like Brett a lot more, though. That's just a biasing thing. That's just a guy I love. I... I think 10 points might be too many. I don't know that Illinois is a good football team. I think they're going to struggle to win a lot of games. But I don't know that they're going to get blown out. I think they're well coached. And I think Virginia is not a team that has the the firepower to really explode on folks. I think I like the point. I, I'm going to go the same way that you are. I'm going with Illinois plus 10 because I, I see this very much the same way that you do. You know, Sidkowski has been playing quarterback for him. It, it, Brandon Peters is questionable now. Like, he could actually play. He's day-to-day. There is a chance that that he can be playing, and and I do still like this team. I think last week after the win over Nebraska, uh, you're coming back home. You kind of feel like you're, you're going to be able to do whatever you want to against UTSA. UTSA is a good football team. Just because they lost at home to UTSA does not mean to me that, that they are going to – I just don't believe that they are going to have any issues. Uh, you, you said that. You 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 told me that UTSA is going to be a good team. Losing them might look not too bad at the end of the season. Also, don't you got to think that Illinois is one of those teams that they're just going to get better every week? Yeah. Yeah, I, I kind of think that. Uh, they're they're just a well-coached team. Like, I, I'm, I'm very curious at how this team is going to continue to look going forward. So... So yeah, so I'm I'm riding Illinois. I I really I feel good about it. I I feel good about it. So, all right, next one up. Let's roll in. We got the Johnny Majors Bowl, and we have got Pitt traveling to Tennessee. And man, Pitt is a three point favorite here. I believe that it was close to a pick'em in the preseason, and and now it's up to three. And now, like bananas. Just this is going to be a lot of fun. It could be an all-time uniform game. I am excited about that because I do think that Pitt is actually going to be wearing the the old school, like seventies and eighties uniform, and you know Tennessee classic uniform as well. These two coaches have actually played each other before, right? Narduzzi and Heupel played two years ago, and you know came down to a last-second touchdown by Pitt to win this game, thirty-five, thirty-four. I'm I'm pumped. I am excited about it. I think this is going to be a fun yeah, ball game. I, I know. I, I love this game. I think it's going to be awesome. I I think I think Knoxville's going to be crazy. That's what I think. I've got a lot of opinions about games this week. I saw home field advantage matter in big, big way in week one. I think it's going to continue to affect outcome. Do you think that, or do you think? I'm overrating that. No, no, no. I, I, I tend to agree. I tend to agree big time. So I, I do think it will matter, but I, I do say this. I I watched a good portion of that Bowling Green, Tennessee game on replay, and Joe Milton did not look very good to me. And, and oh, no, Joe Milton was garbage. He, he, was, he didn't just not look good. He was off. He looked bad against a bad football team. It's okay to say that. Yeah, so I, I think... Going up against the Pat Narduzzi defense, I I'm going to trust Pitt to get this thing done. I, they've got a, a basically eighth year quarterback with Kenny Pickett, Mark Whipple in his third season there. I think Pitt can score, and I think they will score on a bad Tennessee defense. I'm I'm going to ride Pitt minus three here. Yeah, so. I, I, I'll say this: I think that's the right answer. Okay, I think that's the right answer. I'm I'm going to go Tennessee. I think we might see some special stuff in Knox. But I think that across the board against a lot of like big schools that are hosting big games this weekend are not something I want to bet against, especially when they're catching points. Yeah, yeah. No, it is It is all good. It is, I can't I, tell you how it's going to happen. Milton has to come out and look totally different than he looked last week. He has to look substantially better. And Tennessee's defense has to play a lot better. And I need Pitt to make mistakes. 
But I'm not above seeing a, a college football team make mistakes. We watch it happen every weekend. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you're not wrong. You're not wrong. So I I, I do so, think it. I, I could see Milton improving. But against this defense, I don't think Tennessee will be able to run as easily against Pitt. And and I do believe that Pitt's going to be able to put up points on this defense. Like, Bowling Green had so many open opportunities, and they were not able to take advantage of it. So I'm, I'm riding Pitt, and you're, you're doing the same. No, no, no. I'm going to take, take Tennessee. Oh, you're taking Tennessee. Okay. okay. Taking Tennessee. Taking Tennessee. All right. Next one up, we have got Toledo and Notre Dame. Now, this one will not be on regular TV. This will be on the Peacock streaming service, and you have to pay for it. So my guess is there's going to be a lot of illegal streams, I guess you could say. There's going to be a lot of people watching this without having to pay for Peacock because I think this is the only game all season that you would have to pay for with Notre Dame, and I don't know how many people will be doing that. But it will be a sign of the times. It will be, you know, figuring out exactly how many people watch this will be interesting Toledo is a 17-point dog on the road. And remember, Toledo, number two in the country in returning production. I mean, they got everybody back, and they are talented, man. They have got some legit NFL guys on their roster. Notre Dame, short week, played on Sunday night in Tallahassee. They get to come back home. They've got a game next week. I'm 17 points doesn't, like, at first it seemed like, ah, this is easy. It's under three touchdowns. You know, give me the Fighting Irish. Man, I think I'm going to ride Toledo here. I, I think they can keep this game close. They can keep it competitive. I think Notre Dame just wants to get out of here with a win, move on to the next one, and and continue improving. Jack Cohn, by the way, super impressive. Super yeah, impressive. Yeah, I told you. What I tell you, getting away from Wisconsin and getting under a man like Brian Kelly, he's going to look like the best version of Jack Cohn we've ever seen. What you, what you had him on tape and what you thought of him at Wisconsin you need to throw all those thoughts away because he's just going to be a lot better. I don't know what it's going to look like. I just know he's going to be a lot better than he was at Wisconsin because one guy's an offensive genius and the other guy's not. Is Tommy Reese like a bit of a quarterback guru? Do you think that's what's going on here? No. I really, I Gary, I really think Brian Kelly is a really good offensive mind. Hell, he did it at Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're not wrong. You are not wrong. So, I mean, that, he... My God, Deshaun Kaiser got drafted. I mean, what a, <laughs> can actually play yeah. in the NFL. So, yeah, maybe you're not wrong. Maybe you're not wrong. Uh, how, how do you feel about the game? You, you roll in Notre Dame? All right, so I am going to roll with my Irish. So I, I love the Irish. I will tell you this. I have Peacock. I have the paid version of Peacock. So I'm going to get this game already, right? Gotcha. All right, I'm not going to watch. <laughs> I'm going to intentionally not watch. Because I don't like this shit. Yeah, we talked about this a little bit on on an episode before, and yeah, I don't, I don't like it. Now, if you are losing customers because of streams, I completely understand dual feeding it, having one feed go to the NBC television and one feed go into Peacock. It it shouldn't be that hard to do. You can have the same announcers; everything can be identical. You're just sending one through the internet and one over a satellite. This is not that complicated. We have the technology to do this. You are openly fucking the old people that grew up loving a Notre Dame football. That's what this is all you're doing. Yes. I, I can't and, argue oh, with By you. the way, all those old people, those are your boosters. All right? The 23-year-old hot shit that knows how to get on the internet and get this, yeah, he ain't giving you any money. Okay. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. You hadn't given me a pick yet. Yeah, my pick, I'm sorry. My pick is Notre Dame. I'm, pe- I'm taking Notre Dame. I'll lay the points. I, I love the uh, the old man rant there. I, I do appreciate it. So Because I do feel the same way that you do. I but, know uh, how to get on Peacock. That's one of the ones I use. I got it. Yeah. Now, here's the problem. Let's say I want to flip back and forth from games. Let's say this game gets a little ugly and a little out of hand. But I want to keep checking in on it. I'm not switching from my satellite TV over to Peacock. That's not as easily done. That's Agreed. a pain in the dick. Yeah, you can't Nobody just change wants the channel. to do that. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. All right. Let's move on. Next game up. Ball State at Penn State. And Penn State is favored by 22 and a half. 
Penn State had trouble Woo. scoring on on air the other day against Wisconsin because they did have opportunities and and it just I mean they they got by Wisconsin by by the skin of their teeth. I mean it was just ridiculous. It, Sixteen to ten, that's a good win. They were absolutely in the game. The offense got nothing done early. They did have a few explosive plays that ended up being the deciding factor in the ball game. I do wonder because this is a bit of a sandwich game. Penn State just went to Wisconsin, and now they're coming back home, and they've got Auburn next week. Big primetime matchup on ABC in week three. Week two, you got Ball State, who did not show anything at all in their first game. They got scraped by a, a not great FCS team by 10 points, but they got everybody back from a team that won the MAC last year. And, yep. and I have to believe that Penn State is not going to care so much about this game. And I think that this could be Ball State Super Bowl. So I'm. I don't know. Go ahead. I, I, I'm, I'm riding Ball State here. I'm, I'm taking the 22 so, and a half. Like, I, I feel good yeah. about it. No, I'm riding Ball State too. But listen, I don't like all the making excuses for why Ball State's going to cover this game. This is a good Ball State football team, okay? Yeah. And, and, and Penn State is a really good team in the Big Ten. Penn State is not 22 points better than Ball State on their best day. You play this in a bowl game, You if you say this is for the national title, which I know is a little ridiculous, but Penn State's not beating them by 22 points. If Penn State doesn't care about the games around them, and they're only focusing on this game, Ball State is a good football team. They're going to play physical defense, and they are going to run the ball down your throat. I will tell you this. I, I think that some of those... Some of those interceptions that Graham Mertz threw in week one, some of the misses that he had it, to to some wide open guys, I don't think Drew Plitt's going to miss those. I, I think no, Ball State's going to. I don't either. I don't either. I think the offense for, for Ball State is better than the offense for Wisconsin. I, I also think that the defense for Ball State is not nearly as good as Wisconsin's. But... No, not nearly. Not nearly. <laughs> nope, that's okay. But that's why I'm getting 22 points. Exactly. So 22 and a half. 22 and a half. Yeah. So I, I will take yep. it. So give me give me Ball State. Give me the Cardinals, Mike New, that bunch. I'm I'm all in. Let's go. I think it's a good Ball State team. I think so as well. All right. Moving forward, UAB at Georgia. Georgia sitting right now a 24 and a half point favorite, opened at 29, and it has been bet down. And now in the last day, 85% of the money since this thing has gotten down to around 25, 24. 85% of the money has come in on Georgia. Like People think that they are going to be able to wear out UAB no matter what. I, I don't think that, I don't believe that UAB will be held scoreless in this game the same way that, that Clemson was. I think it will be a different kind of game script because neither Kirby Smart nor Dabo wanted to take a whole lot of risks in that game, right? As long as it was being played, uh, played close to the vest, I felt like it was going to continue to be a low-scoring game, right? Because it, yep. one mistake can lose you the ball game in a game like that. I think in this situation, Tyler Johnston, that UAB offense, they'll be able to put up some points. JT Daniels might be out of this game. I, I do think Carson Beck will play well. But I think Kirby's going to take some more chances as well. I I do like UAB to keep this thing close, though. I, I love Bill Clark. You, I think you and I are going to see this much the same way because I think yep. UAB can score with that new offense and... Yeah, I, I do think that Georgia, this is a bit of a come-down spot for them. Just get out of here with a win kind of mentality. Hey, give me UAB to cover 24 and a half. Man, I'm, I mean, we, we do see it the same way. I love Bill Clark. I don't need to say all the things that you said. We agree on those things. I I trust Bill Clark. I'm going to tell you, Kirby finally got over the hump. Kirby finally won a big game, and that's a big deal. I, I, I have made a living shitting on Kirby Smart and crapping all over himself in these big games, okay? And he finally pulled one out, and that's awesome. I'm going to tell you something. That 50-something-year-old man across the way from him, is, is go he won't have near the talent. He will outcoach the shit out of him, though. Yeah, yeah I, I do agree. I do agree. That, Bill Clark that 50 is fantastic. 50-something-year-old man on the other side of the ball knows football, okay? He knows football better than most people on the planet. And I trust him, and I love that man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. So we're both taking UAB plus the 24 and a half in Athens this weekend. I can get down with it. We got, uh, let's see, we got a few more games here. So let's dive into them. Texas A&M headed to Denver 
to face off against Colorado, a 17-point favorite are the Aggies. Haynes King took about a half to get going last week, finally opened up on Kent State. Kent State should have scored more than 10 points. They missed several field goals. They missed a wide-open guy. I mean, it was just a, a disaster. Mistakes all over the field. I Colorado, we saw them twice against really good teams last year, and they got demolished against yep. Utah and by Texas. And I kind of feel like the same thing's going to happen here. Texas A&M, it seems like the offense is being opened up a little more. It seems like they trust Haynes King. He is getting a feel for the game. I don't care that this one is on the road. It's not in a, a home environment. This is in a neutral site. It's in Mile High Stadium. It's you know it's in Denver. I'm I'm gonna ride with Texas A&M to cover this because I don't think the Colorado can can hang. I don't think they got enough athletes. I don't think they got enough players to really be or the depth. How's that? I don't think they got enough depth to be able to keep up with a team like Texas A&M, who I think is just in a different stratosphere from uh, from the Buffaloes. Okay, so we agree again. But I want to put a little caveat on this. I, I'm i afraid of this game but for, for one sole reason. I think with the altitude and then boys from South Texas, not used to that kind of altitude. I guess it's not really South Texas. It's like mid-Texas. Not used to that altitude. And I could see the back door being wide open if that defense just kind of gets a little struggling in the fourth quarter and they're up by, you know, four scores and you let a couple of garbage time touchdowns roll by. That that worries me a little bit, but I'm with you. a and the better football team. I think Colorado's going to struggle to score. I think this defense is going to get better as the year goes on, and I'm, I'm with you. I think the offense is going to get better as the year goes on. They, they have really, it, with Jimbo this year, for whatever reason, it looked in that Kent State game like they were kind of opening this thing up. They seem to be moving a little bit faster. I. You know, under Kellen Mond, like they played at one of the slowest paces in the country, and and now it seems like they have figured out. Okay, we got some horses, you know, outside. We got some wide receivers. We got some speed. We need to take advantage of it, and and I think that's exactly what they will do in this situation. Yeah, the altitude stuff does does bother me a little bit. I read actually a report not that long ago that that altitude does not impact guys nearly as much, especially when they're younger. So I'm I don't know what to make of that. But it, I'm gonna ride with so, that we somebody would put that. We have like a hundred years of data that out, altitude really like messes with folks. That's that's what I thought. Folks ignore that. That's and so it it does mess with folks as far as when you're a little bit older. But if you are a a conditioned athlete, and I'll have to find this this article. But yeah, it, it surprised me that like it doesn't really affect college kids. So you know we talk about it in the NFL all the time, but. Uh, for whatever reason, I guess with college kids, it's, it apparently would not affect. Do so you think? Do so you think the four years of age difference is 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 really the difference? I have no idea. It because <laughs> it's not like we're talking about a decade. It okay, doesn't, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. But I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I'm still riding a And M. I think that they are going to be up by enough that it it won't matter too much. So, so yeah, I mean, I am too, and I'm hope I don't hope for they just they get up big and they hold on. But that's I'll say that I'm just letting you know. That, the back door scares me. That's oh, all. To- totally I fair. don't think Colorado will be in this game the whole way, something of that nature. I think if we bust this, if we lose this, it'll be because we got God on the back door, and it's because maybe the defense is just a little gas. Totally, totally makes sense. Uh, reminder here that we are making these picks. These are different than what I give out on the BetUS show. If you want some of the bigger games and whatever, the SBR show that Chris hosts and I host the BetUS College Football Show. You can go over there. There's a link in the description, and we cover basically every game of the week. I mean, just go and check it out. It's it's very easy to find. So go ahead and dive into those. We've got uh, let's see, three more, and we can we can run these fairly quickly. Memphis, a six point favorite in Jonesboro, Arkansas, against Arkansas State. Arkansas State had some trouble with Central Arkansas last week. Memphis, you know, Grant Gunnell was supposed to be the starting quarterback this year. Uh, it's going to be Seth Hennigan instead because. Grant has got, uh, he's had to have surgery. It looks like he's going to be out for a while. At starting a freshman quarterback, first start on the road. You know, it does scare me a little bit. This line has crept up. It opened at four. It's up to six now. But Memphis continues to find running backs, man. That kid that they've got now is a speed demon. The The offensive line and defensive line do not look 
all that bad, even with some of the transfers that they lost. I I think I'm going to ride with Memphis here. I think that they are the significantly more talented team here. Uh, remember last year, this was like a 20-point line. It was like a three-touchdown yep. line, and, and Arkansas State did cover. They kept it within like two touchdowns. But it's a different Arkansas State team, though, man. Yes, like not not comparable, dude. I I do agree with that. I don't think that they are quite as good as they were last season. Now, of course, last season I think they won what four games, three games, like nothing crazy. But uh, they, they were they score. were a, they were just a drastic different team with Anderson and those big ass wide receivers. Agreed. They do not have those same guys. Uh, I'm riding. I'm riding Memphis. I think anything under a touchdown, I feel really good about. And and honestly, I might would even go higher than that. But you know, I, taking six, like I, I will, I will give up six all day. Yeah, I th- I think I'm with you on that. I, I, we're gonna be the same again. I like Memphis. You're right. The trench play has been really good and really consistent. And we're we're going on like six years, seven years straight of Memphis running backs just being badass. Okay, we've just become a revolving door of little kids that are fast. They're small. That we don't have big, powering running back, but they they're fast. You're not if they get out in open speed, they're gonna embarrass you. They just don't try to open field tackle. You you just got to corral them and run them out of bounds or trip a leg. Because if you try to square them up, you're gonna end up on your face. This yes. is what they do. Yes, yes, you are not wrong about that. You are not wrong. All right, moving on from there, we got the holy war. We have got Utah, a seven-point favorite on the road at BYU. And I'm going to tell you up front, I am taking Utah here. I think this is way too few points. BYU did not overly impress me against Arizona. Uh, Arizona, I do not believe, is a very good team. I think that their coach is competent now, so that's a step in the right direction. But BYU lost a bunch of guys. There's inexperience, it, making mistakes you know, here and there. I think Utah is the significantly more experienced team. I mean, my goodness, they have won so many in a row over BYU. Like, I, I think that Kyle Whittingham takes this game seriously. He does not mess around when it comes to this rivalry. And they got the better players, man. They got the better defensive line. They got the better offensive line. The running backs look awesome right now. They showed nothing that they that they didn't have to show uh, against Weber State last week. I I like Charlie Brewer. I like what they're doing on offense. I like the defense. I'm I'm all in on Utah. Give me Utah minus seven here. All right. So this is one of those situations where I think home field is going to matter. I think Provo is going to be insane. All right. Gotcha. I think there's going to be a massive amount of blue and white, and they're going to be going crazy. They want this game. They need this game. Also, I believe the hate on BYU has gone too far. <laughs> yes, they lost some good players from last year. They're a good football team. And we we joke about it all the time, but it's the damn truth. These guys are not 18 and 19-year-old kids like everybody else in college, okay? These guys are 24 and 25-year-old grown-ass men, right? Married they with got two kids. dad strength. Yeah, they're married with two kids, all right? These guys are not going to be messed with, okay? So, yes, more athletes are on Utah. Utah is the better football team. This is a rivalry game on the road, and the home team is catching more than a touchdown in a rivalry game. I'm going to take those points. I'm going to take my chance. I know I'm taking the worst. It's the same thing with Tennessee. I know I'm taking the worst team. I know that. I don't. I don't care because I've seen too many weird things happen in college football. I, I can totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, Utah has won nine of the last ten, uh, including eight straight. And they are seven and three against the spread in that time span. Uh, however, you know over the last uh, over the last four years, they are two and two against the spread in this game. So, and it's always it's always single digits, always single digits. So, very interesting. Uh, so you were rolling BYU. Let me write that down. And we've got one more game that we are going to hit before we get out of here, and that is Stanford at USC. And this line has ballooned, my friend. It was ten. In the offseason, it is now USC minus 17. So before last week, you could have gotten this game at 10, and now it is at 17. The line has shifted a touchdown in USC's favor. And while I do like USC here, because what I saw out of Stanford last week was awful, I also don't know exactly what Stanford we're going to get, because last week Stanford played at 9 a.m. body clock game, you know, 
Now they've got Tanner McKee starting at quarterback. I think he's going to be pretty good, but it is early in his career. I I don't know that USC, I don't trust Clay Helton to cover 17 points, especially in this game. So I, I think Stanford is 8-2 and two against the spread in their last 10 against USC. I'm, I'm going to take Stanford here. I, I don't feel great about it, but I, I don't know who to trust in this spot. So I'm going to give you a little secret, okay? All right. This is one of my gambling picks at my SBR show. It's when we give out five guaranteed gambling picks that we love on SBR. And, and this is one of my five best games of the week that I love. I told everybody at SBR, I'm going to teach these folks now. Y'all know we're from Mississippi. I'm teaching a Mississippi word. Gary knows this word. Stanford got mollywhopped by Kansas State. And I don't think Kansas State's a very good football team, okay? You can tell me all the body clock bullshit you want. I'm not buying it. <laughs> David Shaw, you, my partner, one of my best friends in the whole world, have tried to convince me that David Shaw is a top 10 coach in college football. Gary, I don't think David Shaw is a top 10 coach in the Pac-12. I think they're going to get their ass whipped. That was... I don't care which one of those quarterbacks play for Stanford. <laughs> I don't care what's happened in history. I don't care that the last eight games were close and all that stuff. It don't matter. This USC team is good, and and I've told you over and over, the hate on Clay Helton has gone too far. I will not stand for it anymore. Now, you do realize San Jose State had them in a 13-7 to game in the fourth quarter. Do not quarter. care. Okay. Do not okay. care. Totally fair. Hang on. Stanford, San Jose State, Gary, right now would be a two-touchdown favorite against the Stanford football team. No. They're a better football team than them. Not, that, that's an exaggeration, okay? <laughs> that's hyperbole. That's a strength. But I'll tell you this. I, I don't care what the number is. I would take San Jose State against against Stanford right now, tomorrow. I can I can get with that. money line, money line. They're gonna beat them. I can They're get with it. At the, the David Shaw statement was from like three years ago. Like absolutely, and it was wrong then. <laughs> he was at the time. He was really good. He, he was, was doing well. He was, he was not good. He and was they, not good. They have had trouble covering the spread. Uh, quite a bit here in the past, you know, couple of seasons. So, yeah, he's that that program is definitely headed in the wrong direction. I I have to I see it. Here's here's the problem. It's not a quarterback problem. They used to be good in the trenches, Gary. That's what made Stanford better than everybody else. Their offensive line play was outstanding. Yes. They got good run production because of it, and their defensive line play was outstanding because they knew they didn't have DBs with the athleticism to hang with the wide receivers in the Pac-12. Okay. They couldn't hang with UCLA and, and Washington and Washington State and Oregon and USC. They just couldn't hang with those wide receivers, so they had to get pressure. Now, they're not good in the trenches, yeah, and they also still don't have the athletes to hang with the other school's athletes. I think they're going to struggle to be not DFL in the Pac-12. I think they're bad. Hey, they, they really might be. I got to see it from USC. I got to see it, and, and you know, I can, I can be wrong on this. I had a good week last week, so I uh, I went five and two against the spread last week in our in our picks. So I might be wrong on this one, but I do gotta see it. I do gotta see it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.